these days. He never does. He doesn't even listen. He doesn't Are care about this. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Go for it. Go for it. Good afternoon, everyone. It is 4.30. Time to uh, call the meeting of the Mort Public Service Commission to order. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Motion is approved. Uh, motion to approve the consent agenda, please. I actually, uh, I have a question on the uh, bills to be approved. <coughs> okay, well. So I would move the, I would like to remove the one item. The one item that was on the consent agenda, so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could do that. I guess we could do, give me a motion to uh, remove that and we'll. Uh, so I, I move to uh, remove the item, the one item from the, the consent agenda. The consent yep. agenda. A second to that motion? Second. Got a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All righty, customers to be heard. Oh, bills. Recognition. Oh, excuse me, bills, yeah. <laughs> Old habits are hard to break. <laughs> okay, uh, let's uh, let's go on to approve bills for payment. Uh, Ralph, you apparently have a question. Yeah, I had a question, uh, probably to Nancy. Uh, we have some payments uh, to the more general fund relating to water, uh, water main notes. Is this for work we have done, the city has done, are we just paying it back or? It's on page four. Uh, Nancy Lund, Administration and Finance Manager. The water main notes are related to the City of Moorhead financing um, water main replacement in 2009, 10, and 11. And the reason they did that was that uh, we weren't coordinating quite as well as we do today. And so they had street rehab in their <coughs> budgets. We didn't have water main replacement in our budget, so they were kind enough to finance that for us through their bond issue. And we just reimbursed them on a... And, annual basis. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Any other questions before we move to approve? Nope. I've entertained a motion then to I approve. move to approve number four. Item number four. Second? Second. Got a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. Now we can move on to customers to be heard or any recognition bill. I have none. Okay. And no one out in the audience to be heard today? Dennis, anything from you? Silent as a judge. Okay. All righty. No jokes. <laughs> okay. All righty. Let's move on then to old business. Any old business? Nope. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. John, um, you have the floor. Are you going to put the strategic plan approval back on agenda for next month's meeting? Yep, okay. we're going to, yep, right. for January. Okay. All right. And then we had a little bit of discussion last month about the Mary Nelson issue. Did, uh, Chris, did you get a chance to research if there was insulation issues or concerns? Chris Knudsen, Water Division Manager. So I think your question was relative to the you, you had a question about the soil that was in the background of the photograph that Mary had in respect to that sewer and whether there was some other support placed underneath that sewer. I, was, that's your yeah, basic is my understanding there should have been some uh, f concrete footings or something of that sort besides soil or class five or whatever the case may be. Right. It appeared from the pictures that there was nothing underneath that connection. Yeah, so um, typically what we would do is and uh, place sand of some type beneath it and then some um, plywood board or support shim underneath where those firm co fittings uh, are. Um, so that's typically what we do. I, I don't know if that was exactly the case in this one because we didn't have a staff person witness the excavation. What a possible explanation could be is that they, when they dug it, they might have undermined that material when they were digging around it and so you end up seeing the black dirt in the background. That's possible, but I don't know. I haven't talked to the contractor specifically if they saw the sand when they were digging. It's possible they didn't, but that's typically how we would install it. Um, just for clarification, the pictures that we have then are it's before any re replacement or repair work was done. Is that correct? I, I believe so, yeah. 
Thank you, Chris. Bill, any further information on our uh, conversation with Mary? Uh, I know that we're expecting to have a completion of this early in January. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I uh, called Mary, left a message with uh, her sister, and she hasn't given me a call back yet, so that was last week. I was going to try and get Chris and I and, and maybe their contractor to meet at the site, yeah. talk about it. I'd really like to come up with something uh, in advance of the next meeting so that we've we've got something uh, settled mm -hmm. when we uh, bring a proposal to you and then we could almost keep it on consent agenda versus, you know, uh, having a big discussion, you know, about it. Um, so hopefully by that uh, January meeting, we'll have had an opportunity to meet and talk and see what we can bring back. First meeting in January is when? The 16th. 16th? That was the, yeah, the second one. Uh, it's on the schedule, but we're planning on ha not having that meeting. Um, it's right after New Year's. Second, yeah. Would that be the only topic that evening if we did meet on the second and get it done? We could make it that way. Yep. Because I, I think if we do get into a, a discussion and we don't have a pre-solution, it's going to take it's going to take a while. Right, and by the time we we hear Mary and her her contractor. By the time we hear each other, it's going to take some time. You know, right, it, it might be worthwhile to try to shoot for that that date, if if that doesn't run into people's, you know, holiday plans. But uh, you know, by the second, I'm I'm back in in gear. I don't know about mm -hmm. this. Okay. Well, maybe we can work toward that. If you're able to visit with Mary between now and, and then, you know, yep. I think it'd be all right to shoot toward that so that uh, maybe we have a solution by the second. If we don't by that evening, then we come up with one. Yep. No, I'd, like to get, I'd like to get it out of, out, of, out of everybody's hair. I know Mary would. Yep. Um, yeah. So, okay. We'll work toward that. Sound like a plan? Good. Good. All righty. Uh, next um, reports, City Council. Uh, I talked to Heidi earlier. Um, she has a sick child this evening, and she figured that the agenda uh, appeared to be short enough uh, content-wise that she was going to stay home with that sick child. So, And I don't see Chuck, so I will forego that. The city manager just walked in, but I doubt if she wants to step up to the microphone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Public Service Commissioners, anything? Mr. General Manager. I really don't have anything unless there's uh, questions. I, I, I hate to put him on the spot, but Travis uh, was just visiting with me a little bit about um, a uh, APPA uh, event that, that I had asked that somebody attend, and yep. he's just back from that. W would you care to give us, uh, you know, two minutes of recap? How's this thing work? <laughs> <laughs> <This timer. Yeah. laughs> two minutes. I don't know if I can put day and a half into two minutes. Uh, Travis Schmidt, electrical engineering manager. Um, myself and Matt Marks attended the APPA Public Power Forward Summit in San Francisco last week on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, a lot of it was uh, geared, um, what they talked about was geared towards a lot what California is doing, <coughs> uh, their removal of coal from a lot of their portfolios and how they're managing that and what they're managing it with and, and issues that have come up because of that, not having um, you know, the coal as a supplement to their power profile and, and how they manage the solar and wind side of that as well because a lot of it is going towards the renewal, new renewables. So a lot of discussion was had about that. Um, they had some other um, companies in there. Um, Nest was there and talking about their thermostats and the, the smarts within them and having them on Wi-Fi, not on Wi-Fi, so that they're connected and how those can help manage um, when you're in peaking periods. You know, they can pre-plan um, warming or cooling your house so that once you hit a peaking uh, time frame, it's actually not running that furnace, things like that, which is very interesting. Uh, Tesla was there. They talked about their power, their wall packs and their solar projects that they've been doing, even the one in Australia and how those have been going. And uh, there's a lot of good innovation coming down the road in the next uh, few years with that. 
um, a lot of different things that they're doing as well too. So um, a lot of what California seems to do seems to trickle to Minnesota very mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good to see what, what's happening so we can be prepared for that as well too. So we did bring a lot back. Uh, we gave uh, Bill a <coughs> download yesterday um, morning, Matt and I did just on what we heard, what we thought was interesting, what could be coming. Electric vehicles are a huge thing. Maybe yeah. a little different type of, of environment out here for them because of the cold weather. It might, might make it a little more difficult, but something that they're doing there as well. So uh, transportation is one of the big questions and what they're trying to do. And the utilities are actually pushing the transportation industry to going more to electric to get rid of the greenhouse gas mm -hmm. emissions. So, yeah. so it was very interesting. It was Any a conference I was anxious to attend, yep. Uh, yep. but uh, other other commitments uh, prevented that. Uh, do you see an opportunity for uh, for more public service to to start to champion some of these things you know, as as we talk about an innovative community and and uh, a green community and how it is that we can start to to maybe impact our own mm -hmm. our own footprint? Yeah, you know, I'd like to visit with Dennis a little bit more, and there might be some opportunities there. Um, MRES <coughs> is a huge part of APPA and so is MMUA and they, they did acknowledge that at the meeting right. or meetings. And, uh, but there is some opportunities, you know, Bright Energy Solutions and, and Dennis, our energy services manager, could right. potentially help with some of those things. So there is some options. There's other, definitely other things AMI-wise or load management-wise that we can look at too that might help us as well. I appreciate so, you being out there. Yeah, it really was great. It was a good conference. Anyone, any further questions, discussion? Bill? Yeah, if there's other questions, that's fine. But I was going to give maybe a quick update on our Capture the Earth uh, proposal that we're going to be providing to Block E tomorrow. Are we, are we good here? Oh, yeah. well, and that kind of it does go like along Chris, with that. Chris, you, you look yeah. like you had a question. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah. I was going to ask if there was any discussion about geothermal. The, yeah. yeah, good question. Um, there was no um, real discussion on, on geothermal. Um, Bill and I's conversation and with Matt as well yesterday. Um, I think that would be a future um, discussion or, or presentation to have at the, at the summit. Mm -hmm. But I don't, they really did not talk about the greenhouse, or not, excuse me, not greenhouse, geothermal um, at, the, at the summit at all, so. Yeah, good deal. Rob? Well, in line with what you just said, I was at a conference, uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services, uh, about two weeks ago. They have a big developer conference, and they had uh, Pacific Gas and Electric up, mm -hmm. which is out in California, obviously. Uh, and they're using uh, massive amounts of data to actually prepare, to actually uh, even the load uh, as they go with wind and, and solar. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they even tie in the weather forecast so they can actually you know, look where the weather is coming from, where the sun is going to shine and not. Yeah. Uh, and they're using a predictive analytics uh, with, with literally massive amounts of data, which was really interesting to see how they're actually are trying to even out the load and, and prepare for, uh, for a peak or a trough uh, yeah. in, in the, on the supply uh, side. Yeah. yeah, Pacific uh, Gas and Electric wasn't there. Um, of course, it was a municipal utility meeting. but. Um, you know, they did talk about that and some of the issues with solar and wind and that they're, they're buying a lot of their solar and wind from the east when they should technically be buying it from the west, but there's no place else to get it from the west since they're on the west coast. So they're trying to figure that out and because when they're peaking, they don't have any solar or and the wind usually isn't as windy in the afternoon. So it's something difficult for them to figure out as well. And, and they did talk about some of those, you know, troughs and, and peaks and stuff like that and how they how they work. Oh, they can't buy from the east because it's dark when they it's need it in the west. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Duh. 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 <laughs> Chris, any follow-up to your, your question? Okay. John? Bill? The, um, we've had an interesting couple weeks on the Capture the Earth front, and I'll just give you a brief update because uh, we are getting Travis and Matt, uh, Matthew Marks, involved in some of the work that Dennis and I have been working on with the Capture the Earth. Um, on that front, last Thursday, Missouri River Energy Services committed, their board of directors committed to the $125,000 uh, for research and development for this project. So uh, our team is able to use that in order to provide <coughs> rebates uh, to try and get the uh, project to use geothermal energy. Um, in addition to that, 
We've had a couple of conference calls with the Electric Power Research Institute, which is the institute that handles all the investor-owned utilities, the cooperative utilities, and the municipal utilities. So it's 100% of the uh, industry, and they are very interested in our project. Uh, just in our call today <laughs> with them, they said, we've talked about a utility owning the geothermal wells and uh, basically doing what we're doing, uh, but to their knowledge, there's nobody that's doing that. And so they're very interested in that uh, project. They think it's real innovative, and they're very interested to see how this all works. Um, the big key, I think, is because natural gas is so low uh, right now and cost effective, it's so easy for people just to put in natural gas. And um, EPRI is interested in efficient electrification. Basically what Travis was talking about, you know, electrifying, you know, traditionally fossil fuel uh, loads. And so the big thing is these rebates that we're, we're uh, trying to get Missouri River Energy Services to provide because really we're not going to be the ones providing those. And, um, but they've given us funding, so we're, our, we're tasked with trying to figure out at what level will it take for them to uh, put in geothermal heating. And um, it is a very renewable resource uh, everybody's excited about it, but we're the ones that are doing it. So we told the EPRI folks today that we feel like we're, you know, kind of out there on the uh, innovation side, and they said, well, that's, that's the definition of innovation. So, but they're, they're uh, watching us, and they're actually gonna do a white paper uh, for us. So um, the other interesting one, too, though, is that uh, the city of Fargo just won an award five million dollars and we don't have the details on that yet and what they're going to do with that but that was a uh, a unique win for the metro area that i think we'll keep keep an eye on one of the unique aspects of that award and and the, the pieces of the puzzle uh, uh, uh was it the roosevelt school kids did you it hear was, about, you know, it was, the, yeah. the, the Roosevelt School kids um, put together a plan and, and they, they cut their electric consumption by something like 29%. Yeah. You know, I, 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 that kind of a project just intrigues me and I, I just wonder what it is that we might be able to do to generate some of that same energy, pardon the pun. But the, uh, all of this, it just occurs to me, Moorhead can really be poised to be a very innovative and, and very green community that you know, that is using energy wisely and you know it, it's up to us to provide leadership toward that you know Dennis has done a number of wonderful things over the years but I, I think I, I think a good a good steroid shot of some sort is is what we need and the attendance at that meeting you know with with Travis and, and some of the other opportunities that, that we can Mm -hmm. can capitalize on. I think we'll really make Moorhead a, a great magnet community for families that want to have this kind of lifestyle. And you know, so I'm, I'm open that we just keep our eyes and ears open to the opportunities. Well, on, on that note, did you have a chance to talk to Mort Youth Hockey? I guess they're going to tear up their, their whole parking lot uh, with the remodel here over the next year, year and a half. I mean, that would be a nice, nice space to go underneath. Yep. I did talk with Moorhead Youth Hockey. There is an opportunity there because really they've got, uh, if they're gonna tear up their parking lot anyway, that would be the time to put wells in. Um, we've talked to our mechanical engineer about the cost effectiveness of doing that. It's an interesting uh, load, and I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but they really do need somewhere to dump that heat that they're creating by creating ice and there's nothing really close there, so they've got a unique problem there, um, but one that we'll take a look at, because it, it might be an interesting case study. Yeah. All right. And they are looking at solar as well, on the because they're putting a new roof on, so might as well get it ready for solar, and then maybe do something that, because that, it faces the perfect direction, so. Anything else, Mr. General Manager? Nope. All right. Oh, John. I think it would be appropriate here if we acknowledged and gave our appreciation to Bill and his son about how gracefully they withdrew from the potential conflict that was perceived with them being involved in this project. 
I think uh, the way you handled it was very professional and we pre I appreciate you just handling it that way. Well done. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, that was that was a difficult situation. Appreciate I, that. You know, I, I thank you for that, John, too. I, I was satisfied, you know, personally, at least, that that we had examined the question and that we'd gotten good advice. But uh, be that as it may, uh, you and and, uh, and Brian did uh, do a very, very graceful exit. Um, well done. Anything else? Okay, at this time, uh, the meeting uh, will, will now close uh, for executive session. Uh, I'll entertain a motion here in a moment. Uh, as permitted by Minnesota statute section 13D.03 to discuss labor negotiation strategies related to negotiations with IBEW Local 1426 and ask me Local 1450. I'd entertain a motion to close. So moved. Second? Second. I have a motion and a second to close, to go to, into closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We will, uh, we do expect to take action uh, upon return. Yes. I would understand. Okay, so we'll be back. Coming back down. Okay. Did, you, did you let her know? Yeah. Okay. Shall we pause? No, I, I think. Go. I, I think you're out. So, yeah, we go. Did somebody let them know? Did you let yep. them Yep. They did. They did. They did. Okay. All right. We are back. Um, I would, let's see, we just go right to motions, right? Reopen. Reopen? Yeah. So do we have to uh, take action to yes. reopen? Okay, I'd entertain a motion to reopen the session. I am so move. Second? Anyone? Got a second, got a motion and a second to reopen uh, the meeting of the Morehead Public Service Commission. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. Now, I would entertain um, a motion uh, regarding item number nine. If we can remember. <laughs> Do I need to make my motion again? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. And you weren't there to read it back? Um, is it the same as the Close. Yep. Yes. Done it. So. I would, uh, I better, yes. I better turn to it just because, do you have it written down to change to it? It's recorded. There wasn't any change. There. Oh, there wasn't a change. There was no change. We'll pause for a moment. Process, process. In the meantime, I hope everybody out there is uh, planning to have a really, really great holiday season. <coughs> Could get up and do a song and dance, a little, little Bob Hope and, you know. Bing Crosby thing here. Gotta get chilly. <laughs> so no, to listen no, to the no. recording is pretty difficult to hear. No, I don't. So I didn't. Okay. Okay. Now ah, we're ready to go. John, would you uh, would you share your motion with us? Uh, my motion was to approve the collective bargaining agreement with IBEW, the uh, which would be the labor agreement between Moore Public Service Commission and the International Brotherhood Electrical. Workers, local number 1426, as written. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Hearing no opposition, motion is approved. Uh, item number 10. May I have a motion, please? I move that the commission approve the labor agreement between the Moorhead Public Service Commission and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, 
AFL-CIO Local 1450 with revisions. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion to second, whoop, pardon me. Um, the revisions, so. As revised. As revised. As revised, As revised. yeah. Yeah. As revised. With with the version no we have in our packet is not the same. That's right. Is agreed. Okay. okay. There's there's one line different, I guess. Okay. As revised. Okay. I just okay. wasn't sure if the revisions are going to be. No. As revised. No. That's right. Our, scri our scribe is caught up, but there's no 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 change to the motion. No change to the motion. Okay. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Besides getting our scribe caught up. <laughs> okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion's approved. Now, let's move on to item number 11. Uh, any uh, any further presentation on uh, item number 11, Mr. General Manager? Or? No, I don't believe so. Okay, we're good with our earlier discussion. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to approve item number 11. So, <clears throat> I move that uh, we approve the compensation market study report for MPS prepared for flood in hood and approve the exam based pay structure for professional and supervisor employee group uh, for 2018 through 2020. Thank you, Ralph. I have the motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. Item number 12, very quickly, anything upcoming that uh, we've already discussed uh, uh, January 2nd, so we're on tap there. Yep. You'll keep us informed about uh, progress toward that if we do it on the 2nd or yeah. not. And uh, for that meeting, I will most likely be out of town, so some oh, okay. of will be in my seat, but uh, we'll, be, we'll be trying to get something uh, together before then. Okay, Chris. Just wanted to, uh, Who are you? Great, thanks. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, January 25th. Oh, microphone. Mike. Just wanted to give you a heads up that January 25th, we're going to be doing an open house, open house with respect to the Woodlawn Water Tower design art process. So, um, City Council will be informed. Just wanted to give you guys kind of a oh. save the date on uh, on January 25th. So, is that in cooperation with the Arts Commission again? It's As in cooperation with the Arts, with the Arts Commission. Commission. Yeah. Um, they'll have some people there. Um, we'll be talking more about it at the next commission meeting, but kind of just wanted to get it on, on your radar as well. Okay. Um, Neighborhood knows? They will know. They don't know yet. You're, you're, you are kind of the first, uh, first people to know, I would really? say. Really? That's a first. So, <laughs> there'll be a lot of notifications going out, but okay. just kind of wanted to get it out there. Okay. Great. Thanks. Do you want to explain the intent of that open house? Sure. So, um, similarly to the uh, Oakport process, um, if you'll remember back, we did uh, a number of meetings. Um, we had a, actually a water tower art subcommittee of which uh, Chris Thompson was, was very involved in. Um, we, after we kind of did a few meetings, we did a, a pretty large open house, which I believe a number of commissioners attended. Um, we invited, uh, I think, all of the Oakport residents <coughs> to come and attend that meeting. And then we did a um, basically an art design process for, for Oakport after that meeting, kind of taking some of the themes that we heard in that meeting and then trying to come up with some designs from the community. That's one where the community submitted designs and then those designs were further refined and, and developed into what's on the Oakport water tower. Um, the intent here at this, uh, this upcoming Woodlawn uh, is Woodlawn Open House is to really listen, you know, kind of to some maybe feedback on the Oakport process um, we approved a contract back in October um, with the artists uh, and, and coordinator for the Oprah project to kind of re-envision what uh, maybe what takes some elements of Oakport and, and kind of re-envision it for Woodlawn. Um, that's really, we kind of want to get some community feedback before we dive too deep into the design. Um, but uh, that's, that's primarily in the intent of that meeting is to kind of listen. Uh, and, and get some feedback. And then I think after we get some feedback, we'd go back to the artists, um, give them some time to develop a, a new design, and then probably have some type of subcommittee with, um, we'd, we'd, we'd ask the commission to appoint a, a, a member to a subcommittee, which would include 
possibly some neighborhood residents, possibly mm -hmm. some city councilors. Um, we're still working on that, but uh, I think we'll have some type of subcommittee that would further vet the design and then we'd bring it back um, in middle March for, for final approval on, uh, on, on the Woodlawn Water Tower. Chris, uh, um, and Chris, um, I, don't, I don't mean to get controversial at all here, but I think an added element of this conversation might want to be jumping into the conversation that is out there about um, that site, that, that area, and, and what, what use is eventually going to be, be made there. I think the water tower is going to play a, a possibly integral part to whatever concept design comes forward. So you, I'm, I'm, I, it just occurs to me that we might want to broaden the conversation a little bit to include what, what land uses and what, what might start to happen there before we commit a great investment into, into what's going to be on that tower without having it in context with what's going to be around it and below it. it you know, just a suggestion, but I'm, I, it's a very visible one compared yep. to Oakport. Correct. And very much a part of, of its surroundings and the scene there and the mm -hmm. river and, and, and really the central part of the community. So um, I, I, would, I would urge us to be a little bit more uh, studious in, in how it is that we approach this, this particular design. Just kind of a first impression. What am I jumping into here? I just knew I'd be getting into trouble with that. <laughs> yeah. Chris Volker, city manager. Um, yeah. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, Chris and I have been talking about the timeline. Here's, here's the issue, I think, is that okay. um, MPS and the city have a list of projects for 2018, funded projects, and they have a timeline. The timeline's very tight. The timeline for the water tower is to have it um, decided and ready to go in the spring, right, yeah. of 2018. The discussion you're talking about of regarding the use of that, everybody refers to it as the old power plant site. I should have um, been here. You'd have loved it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. anything about it. So yeah. Um, yeah. I do know the history, and, <laughs> and the city intends absolutely on having a conversation, including public input into that process. That will not happen within this timeline. Okay. The timeline here for the water tower has to be in the next, you know, six weeks Several really well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know two months at the latest right two months so that won't be able to we've got the tiff preserved for that site but a lot of discussion has to occur on what is going to happen in that site okay. and that's going to have to happen starting in 2018 for sure but okay all right okay thanks great thank you appreciate the update thanks Chris. anything else for chris while we've got him up there Chris, Chris, or Chris? Chris, Chris, and Chris, yeah. <laughs> Chris. All righty, good deal. So, and it's well, Christmas, so what? You know, let, let, me, let, let me jump in. So if, if we need more time for the woodland, should we paint interstate first? Um. Hey, might as well. He, he's, <laughs> he started it. I started it. <laughs> Merry Christmas, yeah. But, you know, well, uh, yeah, well, how, how imperative you're gonna, is That's a more woodland visible site. Versus... The, the interstate will be a more visible site, well, so that visible, might be more difficult than the, this one. But we're not changing the context. Yes. At the interstate. Yeah. I think if you'll have the that same at, conversation. Yeah. Okay. A couple, okay. a couple difficulties on that um, before we get too far down the road. Number, it's a pretty significant price difference. Number one. So I mean, we oh. we approved a budget based on okay. painting Woodlawn. <laughs> And the, the decision between Woodlawn and I-94 was a technical one. I, the corrosion on, on Woodlawn is much more advanced than okay. it is on 94. Okay. So good ask. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. But I mean, glad you brought it up because um, you know I, that one I think is going to be a, a, a little bit, the, the focus of that tower I think is going to be different in that it, it is such a visible location. I think we want to start probably this summer actually on that tower. Um, we're looking at painting that one in 2020. So. Yeah. Um, it's on our radar. I think we'll be looking for maybe some external sources of funding for that um, because, you know, the scope that we have approved on, on Woodline is, is the 20, like in the $20,000 range for um, 
artwork or, or whatever happens to go up. If we wanted to do something more than that at 94, I think it'll take some time to really develop those concepts if we wanted to go for a grant or something like that. Yeah. You know, Les, Les Bakke always wanted that smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it, no, Maybe it, there's a grant for that. But I'm thinking neon that says, you know, the face of Fargo that says, move to Moorhead. <laughs> I didn't even get a reaction out of that. Nope. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, it's getting late. Anything else, Mr. General Manager? No, sir. All righty, and then the other upcoming uh, meeting opportunities. Um, I, I still expect uh, to attend uh, the legislative rally that's coming up in okay. February. I think that may end up being a kind of an important visit for us. Uh, we may have a new senator by then. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know any timetables on that, but if, if Senator Franken uh, has stepped aside by then, and there's indications now that people are trying to talk him out of it, um, we may have Senator Smith by then, and I think that could be a valuable conversation for us uh, while we're out there doing the work of the uh, various uh, utility groups. So, um, so I kind of expect to go. Uh, any other commissioners that might like to join in on that one? I think uh, I think we're budgeted to provide a little bit of travel this year. Yep. Yeah, good deal. So, anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. We're adjourned. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah.